you understand, I think you laid it out pretty well, you know, there is a double tax applied to any cargo transshipped uh, to another U.S. port, whether it's domestic or international in its original origin. Uh, how burdensome is the second application of that harbor maintenance tax uh, to the development of short sea shipping? Mr. Nass, Mr. Weekly, as well as if you want to expand on that. Um, it's a big issue for many of us on the committee. So when, when we met a couple weeks ago with uh, some beneficial cargo owners and uh, port owners and shippers up and down the East Coast, the biggest part of the discussion was you have to be competitive. Uh, a business is not going to uh, move to a mode of transportation that's more expensive than, than less expensive. I, it's, it's that simple. Uh, so I, I believe any way that, that you can make waterborne transportation uh, more cost effective, more competitive is going to help get this, this program uh, going. And, and I think really what we need to do as, as a nation is recognize that the benefits of, of moving heavy cargo off the road. Uh, the numbers I've heard, 44, 46 cents uh, uh, damage uh, to a roadway uh, from a heavy box. Uh, I see a win-win here. I, you know, let's spend 10 cents uh, on, on getting that box onto, onto the water. And certainly the, the harbor maintenance tax, the, the notion of, of even, it sounds like a small money, a small amount for your average person, right? 0.125. Uh, in an industry though that where margins are razor thin and any cost that, that you add to any of it just makes it that much less competitive. Yeah, appreciate that. Mr. Weekly, I don't know if we can get your slide back up. Uh, I thought it was actually uh, pretty compelling and it doesn't, even in, it doesn't even include the point Mr. Nash just made about the external costs of uh, of maintaining those roadways, right? That's not included in your in your number, right? Correct, sir. That that does not include that external cost of the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund. I concur with everything Mr. Nass said, as well as Mr. Willis. Um, if I may pick up on a point Congressman Garamendi uh, mentioned, it's not only a disincentive uh, to, to get around the West Coast ports; it's a disincentive for containers to come into the Great Lakes. They're offloaded in Montreal and Quebec. They're put on a rail and they're railed into Detroit, Chicago. I see them crossing the bridges all the time. Um, in the Port of Cleveland, they've come up with an innovative uh, approach to, to subsidize direct uh, container ships on a more uh, liner basis to Europe. Um, I think they've sem since stopped subsidizing that. It still survives. However, the exact problem we're talking about prevents Cleveland from being a feeder port, a hub and spoke to Europe because of that second domestic move. So it's a challenge for us on the lakes too, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, with that I'll yield to the gentleman from Ohio, uh, Mr. Gibbs.